to your feet. We're going to ask Pastor to come and to preach the Word of God to us. Let's pray for our pastor. Lord Jesus, we thank love you, Jesus. and we thank you for your Spirit, Lord. We thank you for your promises that are in the Word of God. We thank you, Lord, that you have always protected us and been there for us. And that if we would give our lives to you, Lord, we would surely enjoy the benefit of living our lives in submission to you. God, we are blessed because of who you are. And we're blessed. And we pray to be a blessing for you. God, touch every heart in this place. I know in our pastor to preach your word to us. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Pastor. Praise the Lord. Clap your hands for the Lord if you would. Hallelujah. Ain't the Lord wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. I'm glad to know it doesn't matter how, how lonely you may feel. It doesn't matter how lonely you feel like you are. You are never alone. The apostle wrote in the Hebrew writing. He said they, he will never leave us nor forsake us. Ain't you glad he's with you all the time? Amen. No matter where you're at and what you're doing, God's presence is always near. Thank you so much for our singers, each one, and uh, our guest that's with us tonight. I'm going to tell you now, it ain't going to take me any more services. I'm going to quit calling y'all guests. <laughs> it's not going to take just another service or two, and I'm going to send you a card when you're not here. That's what we do, right? So, but well, we do appreciate it. Appreciate David being back with us. He's been with us tonight. Thank you so much. Amen. Uh, I started to tell David tonight, if anything breaks out, remember, I'm on your side. If anything fight breaks out, which is not going to, but I'm on his side. I don't go about anybody else. That's the one I won't be. Amen. Ain't the Lord good? Praise the Lord. That was a new song you sung tonight, y'all. I like that. Never alone. John's Gospel, chapter 5, for our text tonight. And if you'll help me, we'll get out of here by midnight. And uh, we'll go, maybe if anything's left open, we may eat. Uh, but uh, let's just have the Word of God tonight. It's quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing, piercing. I thank God for the Word, don't you? Yes. Brother Mark quoting that from John. Man, it just got me excited, boy, John. John, the Apostle John, or, or John, the Gospel of John, dealt more with the deity of Jesus than yes. any of the other books. And he he really, he really sliced it right down to the nitty gritty. And in one place he said, if you don't believe that I'm he, you'll die in your sins. That's right. Now, brother, that's, that's tight, but that's right. Amen. Amen. You, can, you can take the Word of God to the bank, I can promise you. John chapter 5, verse 1, after these... Uh, after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep's market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay great, a great multitude of impotent folk, not important, but impotent, of blind, hawk, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel would come down in a certain season into the pool and trouble the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years whom Jesus saw. When Jesus saw him and knew that he had been long, now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The important man answered him, said, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me in, but while I'm coming, another step up down before me. That meant he had tried and was trying to get in the water. 38 years is a long time. That's how long I've been here at this church, right at 38 years. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked and on the same day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. He answered them, He that said, He that made me whole, the same saith unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. 
just a short sermon tonight, just not, not lengthy, not real, not all night, staying close to the presence of God. Stay close. Don't let him out of your sight. Don't let him out of your reach. Saints, stay close to him. Would somebody lift your hands and pray for this service right now? For this message to come and thank you tonight. God, I thank you tonight. I pray, Lord, that you'll minister tonight, Lord. Through your word, Jesus, by your spirit. Touch each soul here tonight. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now lift your hands and just love him. Thank you. Thank you for his presence. Thank you, Lord, for your presence tonight. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Staying close to his presence. You can be seated. We must, whatever we do, we as God's people need to always stay as close as possible to Jesus Christ. The truth is we might miss the season of the troubling of the water if we don't stay close to Him. If we don't stay close to Jesus, we might miss the revival that God has for us. If we don't stay close to Jesus, we might miss the healing that God would like to give us in our bodies. If we miss the time because of bitterness, or if we miss the time because of pride, or because of, of uh, anger or pityness, if we're feeling sorry for ourselves, or, or if we're angry, if we miss that, we don't know when the next moment might come that we get close to God. I know you've been in church when, when you have felt the presence of God so strong that, that you can almost, one preacher said, you can almost see the fog in the, in the, in the building. Uh, the presence of God is so real. But yet you've been in church also where you didn't feel so churchy. It wasn't that God wasn't there. God was always there, but you just didn't feel it like you did at other times. Uh, that's when you really want to make sure that you don't miss God's presence. Uh, because you don't know what Wednesday night's going to hold. You don't know what Sunday morning next week is going to hold. But tonight is your night to make sure when Jesus comes passing by, when he walks by you tonight, you need to make sure you're close enough to him that you can feel his presence. I want to get close enough to him that I can bump into him. Like he said there, the one of the disciples said, the multitude is thronging thee. I want to throng him tonight. I want to get so close to the presence of God that I can literally reach out and touch him right. I've always had this desire I've never it's never happened and probably never will but I've always had yeah you're going to laugh I know you are you might as well just go ahead and get your laugh already I've, I've had the desire to just sit at a table with Jesus right. where I could literally see him with my eyes and if he drinks coffee just have a cup of coffee with him and just tell him all about my problems as if he don't already know. I just want to, would like to sit there with him and just talk to him and say, Lord, how's things in heaven? How's everything going your way, Lord Jesus? And he would say, son, you don't need to worry about my way. You need to worry about how things are going your way. You need, you need to take notice of how things are happening around you. And I just I just love to sit there. And if I ever get that opportunity, I'm going to come back and you're going to hear a preacher that's totally different than anyone you've ever heard. In the presence of God is fullness of joy. And at His right hand, there's pleasures forevermore. God, just let me be in your presence. Hallelujah. First Chronicles, Sister Chrissy. Uh, Joe, will you put First Chronicles on the screen, 12 and 32? First Chronicles 12 and 32. And the Bible said in the church. Will you read that for me, Sister Chrissy? If it's on the screen. Listen carefully. I want you to get I want you to get the point that I'm about to make right now. And the, and of the children of Issachar, which were men and of the children of Issachar. Which were men that had understanding. Whoa. Which were men that had understanding. Let me tell you what we need in our hour. 
we need people of understanding. We need to understand the times that we're in. That's good, Sister Christian. Thank you. We need to understand the times that we're in. We need to understand that how important it is for you and me to get close to God. Never mind all the garbage that's in the world. Never mind what the world's doing. Quit worrying about the world. Quit worrying about things of the world and start getting closer to God. If we ever needed understanding of the coming or the day of the coming of Jesus Christ, we need to understand we don't have time to drag our feet. We don't have time to wait around. It's time to get understanding and realize that we need the presence of God greater than anything else. Yes. Yes. And so, these men were men of understanding. The Bible teaches that Jesus said unto them, uh, uh, arise, him to arise, Take up your bed and walk. The Pharisees and the doctors of the law jumped right on top of that and said it's not lawful for you to carry your bed on the Sabbath. But he didn't, he didn't back up. He said the one that told me to, to heal me told me also to arise Take up my bed and walk. Let me tell you, I got a message for somebody here tonight. A spiritual message. I'm going to tell you spiritually speaking, you need to arise and take up your bed and start walking for Jesus. You need to get closer to the presence of God than you've ever been in your life. We need men. We need understanding of things that we are in. We need to understand the times that we are in right now of the times of the, of the, the preparing for the coming of the Lord. Jesus walked on the water. The Bible tells us in four different places and it was worded a little different in two or three of them but he told us in four different places that there was a storm on the Sea of Galilee and the disciples was out in the ocean or in the sea in a boat and it looked like like it was going to sink. There was problems uh, and, and things was happening uh, like you wouldn't believe. I got caught in one storm one time in a bass boat with this guy. He had this bass boat would run faster than my car, I think. And we was way down Cold Creek. And he kept on, I kept telling him, man, we better get out of here. Oh, we got plenty of time. Oh, we better get out of here. Oh, we got plenty of time. Guess what? We didn't have to understand. <laughs> Man, that storm hit. He fired that thing up in a no-wake zone. And he kicked that dude, man. And here it finally laid down, planed out. And I thought if the storm don't mean, I didn't know if I'd rather fight the boat or the storm. Man, that storm was kicking and raging. I was scared out of my wits. Water wasn't coming in the boat like it was that night with the disciples. Uh, but all the things were happening and, and, and these disciples was afraid. And guess what? The Bible said Jesus come walking on the water to go out to them. Now listen, I'm not preaching about him walking on the water. I'm not preaching about the porches at Bethesda. I'm preaching about the presence of God. Jesus comes walking on the water. And you know what the Bible said? He would have passed them by. He would have just kept right on going and not even bothered with them sleepy heads. But somebody in the boat stood up and cried, Jesus, save us. And the Bible said he turns and goes and joins himself in the boat with the disciples. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying, if you don't get close to the presence of God while that spiritual water is being troubled, next time He might pass you by. He might not deal with you next time like He deals with you tonight. Let me tell you something. God is going to deal with people in this building tonight. God is going to talk with people here tonight if we'll but acknowledge Him and get as close to Him as we possibly can. He's going to be here. We have to be people of understanding. We face it, we're facing times right now if we're not careful. We'll miss the presence of the Lord because the book said He would have passed them by. No one can get my blessing for me. I'm going to get something here tonight. I'm going to leave here different 
than I was when I came. You can't do that for me. I gotta do it for myself. I can't do it. If I could, believe me, I would. If I could get you full of the Holy Ghost, I'd have you running these aisles and worshiping God, but I can't do it. God has made each of us free and His Word, and, and, and we make a choice. Do I want to get close to God or not? Do I want to live for God or do I not want to live for God? I can get as close as I want to, but I got to do it myself. My wife can't do it. My children can't do it. The singers can't do it. Nobody, the preacher can't do it. I got to do it myself. No one's going to get your blessing. No one's going to get your blessing. You, know, you hear me? You got to get it yourself. I can't pour it out on you. If I had me a bucket, Brother Gray, I'd just pour it all over you and we'd shout all over this building, but I can't do that. You gotta do it yourself. Help me a minute. I'll get you out here early in the field. If the Lord's willing. I can't get it for you. I might be a part of your blessing. If you get to shouting and carrying on, I'm gonna shout and carry on with you. If you start running down, remember, remember, do you remember, anybody remember Stan Cook? The big boy, that big boy? Y'all remember him? I was sitting right there with my wife, sitting, her and I. Brother Chris was sitting right there on that front pew. Brother, brother uh, Cook was preaching and, and singing and was having a great time. Chris jumped up, started running around the church building. How many remembers that? He does it a lot. He had not done it lately, but he will. You just give him a chance. He just kept running. And Brother Stan Cook made the statement. He said, I'm not worried about Brother Chris running. What I'm worried about, how come he's having to run by himself? Yeah. How come somebody else ain't up running with him? That's what he said. I can't get Brother Chris's blessing. I can't pour it out on him, but I can be a part of it. If he cuts out, I can cut out with him. If he worships, I can worship with him. If he shouts, I can shout with him. You say, well, I just don't believe it that way. Well, I just feel sorry for you. How long you probably are. I can't do it, but I can be a part of it. I'm going to be a part of this great blessing here tonight. I, can, I can't set back. You can't just set back and wait for God to pour it out on you like pouring it out of a bucket. It won't happen that way. You'll never get it that way. If you're waiting for somebody to package it and bring it to you, it ain't going to happen. If you're waiting for somebody to, to pray it down for you, it ain't going to happen. It, I'm not going to pour it in your lap. If you're waiting for pastor to pack it, pack it up and bring it to you and hand it to you, it ain't going to happen. You're going to have to get it for yourself. You're going to have to worship God for yourself. Others, others may get their blessing. They may get it for them but they're not going to get it for you. They'll get their touch. They'll get their healing. And we'll sit back and wonder, how come we didn't get our healing? Is anybody understanding what I'm saying? Others are not going to wait on me. You're not going to wait on me. If the presence of God starts moving, you're here tonight, and you've got the Spirit of God. If God's presence starts moving, Brother Z, if you feel them goosebumps running up and down your backbone, you're not going to wait to see what I think. You're going to stand up or get up or run or shout or do something. The presence of God is going to move you somehow. You're not going to wait on me. I can't wait on you. It's mine. It's mine if I want it. I got the Holy Ghost at this end of the, or not in this building, but this end of the altar. We had a smaller church, just had one altar bench all the way across, and, and I'm standing at one end, my wife's standing at the other end, and God gave me the Holy Ghost down here, and she was getting the blessings down here, and she didn't even see me get the Holy Ghost, and, and, and it was just because I got it for myself. I wasn't waiting on her to come down there and say, come on, John, get the Holy Ghost. The man of God said you can have it. I wasn't waiting. He laid his hand on me. I spoke in tongues and I shouted and I worshiped God for myself. I don't know what everybody else was doing. I wasn't waiting on nobody. Honey, it was time. My water was being troubled. I'm going to tell you tonight that God wants to trouble somebody's water here tonight. God wants to shake somebody up here tonight and let you know whatever you got, you ain't got all of it. You need to get some more of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Pope man answered him, Sir. I have no man when the water's troubled to put me into the pool. Verse 7, but while I am coming, can't wait on someone else. He's sitting back and waiting. That didn't work. No one's going to wait on me. Nobody's going to wait on you. Don't wait on me. If you wait on me, you might miss it. Get in while God's troubling your water. When you feel the presence of God, you get in. Can you imagine what it must have been like at that pool? I got this big imagination. 
I told you about my imagination. You remember, I'm, I'm, I'm the leading scorer for the Boston Celtics. I'm the leading scorer. I got most points, I got the most dunks. Can you see me dunking a, foot, a basketball? I got the most uh, assists. I, I, I got the most three-pointers. What an imagination. I'm making trillions of dollars a year. What an imagination. But I use my imagination on this pool of Bethesda. I can see people sitting all around, or laying all around. And all of a sudden, there's a blind man. He's sitting back over here, back about 15 or 12 or 15 feet from the uh, edge of the pool. He's blind as a bat. He can't see. All of a sudden, he hears somebody saying the water is being troubled. He gets up, Sister Creasy, and he starts to make his way back to find that pool. And all of a sudden, he trips over somebody and he falls down. And this person hollers at him, get up, get out of my way. You're hindering me. Nobody's helping nobody. Everybody's trying to get to that pool by themselves. I got a question to ask somebody. I wish I had a scholar here tonight. I wish I had a college graduate. This would be a good one for a college grad here tonight. I wish I had somebody to answer this question. 38 years. You don't understand me. I'm getting back out of where you're at. 38 years. 38 years. This man's been sitting there. Try, why? What he posted. What's he doing sitting back and letting someone be in For nothing else, once a year, he could have got a little closer. Why was he 38 years in this condition, Sister Creasy, and still too far from the water? You ready? You ready? Y'all got your braces. Why? Are we so far from the presence of God sometimes in our life? He's there 38 years. He's trying because he says, when I'm trying to come, somebody else beats me into the water. Why in the world? No one's going to help him. Can you imagine the chaos and the rush and the madness and the trouble? That all these people are going through to try to get to the pool of Bethesda. Everybody's getting, getting, uh, getting into everybody's way. Everybody's tripping over somebody. Somebody said, "Get up and get out of my way! You're, you're hindering me." Thirty-eight years had this man been there to, to be tried to be the first into the pool, but never made it. Never made it. Why in the world? What he already healed? How come? Could he already been in that water? How come? You know where I would have been? I think I would have been laying so close to the edge I may have even fell in. I would have have been so close to the edge. He knew, he knew the trouble was coming. After 38 years, he ought to have had a time. He ought to know the time that was coming. Of course, you can't put God on a timer. I understand that. But he ain't going nowhere. He got nothing to do. He's not going to the field. He can't walk. Why wasn't he near the water? Well, the pre you know who's going to get the blessing? You know who's going to get the healing? It's the one that's nearest the presence of God. The water and the pool of Bethesda is representing the presence of God. The one that's going to get the blessing is the one that's nearest the presence of God. The one that's put forth that effort to get close enough to God that if God does anything, if it's nothing else, it's going to spill over on me. In the presence of God. Why? Who is going to get the experience of the moving of the presence of God? You can't stay too far from Him. If you get too far from him, you're going to miss him. If you get too far from him, you can't get in the water in time. Somebody else is going to beat you. I heard a story. Preacher told this story. I should have wrote it down. Told this story about this evangelist that's having revival. And uh, the evangelist made a statement one night and said, Tomorrow night, God is going to give the Holy Ghost to the first person that hits that altar. He said the next night, said you would not believe the folding chairs 
that people had brought in sitting right next to the altar bench, lined up all across the front, took him at his word. If it's going to be the first one that makes it to the altar, it's going to be me. The story said, man said what he said to the congregation when he finished preaching. Let's stand. He said it was like a stampede of people coming to that altar to get to that altar first. I thought about the pool of Bethesda. I thought about when the troubling of the water was. Whoever was the closest to that water was the person that got into that water. Whoever was the closest to the presence of God is the person that gets the joy unspeakable and full of glory. Whoever can fight your way into the presence of God, resisting temptation, resisting the devil, resisting everything, and getting to the presence of God first when the water is being troubled. You can't stay too far from Him because you don't know how long. You can't blink your eyes. You can't skill you can't miss it you just you got to be ready you got to stay right on the edge if you want to get in there first you got to be standing laying kneeling right on the edge of the water of the pool when the water's trouble if you're going to get the blessed preacher if you're going to be a if you're going to be the man of god that you're supposed to be you're going to have to stay close to the presence of god yes, jesus asked a question this is a simple question a college graduate could answer it. It's a yes or no question. Wilt thou be made whole? Do you want to be healed? Yes or no? Do you want the presence of God? He doesn't say a word. Now listen. He don't say yes he don't say no. Jesus asked him, yes or no question. Do you want to be made healed? He didn't say yes, Brother Z, or he didn't say no. He complained. Isn't that awesome? He complained. He said, every time I try to get in the water, boy, I've heard every kind of excuse in the world. I've heard sick cats had to take the cat to the hospital. Couldn't come to church. Boy, I hope y'all never done that. I've heard everything. I can write a book. I bet I could get rich. I've heard everything. He said, somebody be, I complain. People say, well, I can't get into that service. Well, why can't you get into that service? Well, because I don't like that song they sing. That person sitting over in the other side of the building done me wrong and I can't get my mind on the Lord because of him or her. Boy, ain't that stupid. Amen. Ain't that ignorant. They're probably just worshiping God. Having a great time. You're sitting over sucking your thumb. Come on, somebody. I can't get into that service because I don't like the preacher. He don't preach to suit me. That's tough. What y'all? You know my favorite statement? You can't hack it. Get your jacket. It's just tough. But that's a pretty poor excuse to not to get in the presence of God. You know, I, Brother Savoni, you and me may, be, may get crosswired someday, but that don't give either one of us a right to blame nothing on God. You know what I'm saying? He didn't answer yes. Or, I don't ask you that. I'm going to ask you a simple question that anybody, a yes or no question, do you want? To get close to the presence of God. Amen. It's yes or no. Yes, don't have to make excuses. No. The person next to you or behind you or in front of you or across the aisle from you has nothing to do with it. This is a yes or no question to you and to me. When the devil and when you get involved in the in the in the uh you, you know what proof of desire is? Pursuit. When you go after something, you prove that you've got a desire for it. That's right. When you go after God, after the presence of God to come into your life, you just prove that you want the presence of God because you're going after it. It may take you a while. It's sitting in our mobile home. Michelle, it was a mobile home. We went to the trailer. Uh, and, and Mumford, years ago, we lived there before I even started pastoring. 
friend of mine, uh, Joseph's uh, uncle, had, so, had was seeking the Holy Ghost and had been seeking the Holy Ghost for several years, as far as I remember, and, and something had happened. We was in revival. Something had, I guess my old car wouldn't start. And, and uh, uh, so uh, we didn't get to go. We lived after Mumford. It was in Frazier. We didn't get to go to church that night. So we went to bed, and, and it was about midnight, man, and I heard something outside our house, and, and he was beating on the side of our mobile home. Bah, 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 going up and down the side, beating on it. And, uh, and he just made me glad I didn't have a gun. So, and he said, he was screaming, I got it. I got it. I got it. So excited. And God had baptized him in the Holy Ghost. And somebody asked him the next night, said, how long did you seek the Holy Ghost? He said, about 15 minutes. About 15 minutes. When you get what I'm talking about, the devil laughs at you. Your friends laugh at you. Y'all, you're going to the old Pentecost church. They're crazy down here. You're going down to oneness church. They baptize in Jesus' name. You're going down to where they preach the Jesus' name truth. You're down to where they act crazy. They cry when they're happy. They laugh when they're mad. You're going down there and he laughs at you. And he pokes fun at you. You've got to do like the man at the pool of Bethesda. He turns around and says, I don't know anything about this man, but he healed me and he told me to take up my bed and walk. You can tell them I don't know what happened. I don't know what's going on. I don't know, but I know Jesus baptized me. In a, I spoke in tongues. I spoke a language I didn't know anything about. I felt the Holy Ghost anointing from my head to my feet. I don't know it, but I know this. I got into the presence of God. And when you get into the presence of God, Jesus said unto them, Rise and take up your bed and walk. Listen carefully. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, it is the Sabbath day. It's not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. Any, some people will do anything to hinder the move of God. I'm going to say this a bust of gut. If I was sitting by somebody that wouldn't let me worship God for talking to me, laughing at me, or cutting up with me, I'd get up and move. We need people of understanding that understands what's going on. It's time. Simple question. No excuses. It's not your mother-in-law. It's not the preacher. It's not the choir. It's not the praise singers. It's maybe they do sing a song occasionally you don't like. Big deal. If you sung, I probably wouldn't like some of yours. Maybe thank it. But one question I want to ask you. Do you want the presence of God? Yes or no? Don't have to make an excuse. Don't have to say, well, I'm too old to act like that. Or I'm too young. Or I'm too dead. Why don't you just break it down and say, I'm too lazy. There it is. There I'm it just is. not going to do it. I'm too shy. Yes or no? Do you want a move of God in your life? Do you want God's presence? Stand with me. Come on up, Rebecca. Come on up, y'all. Come to the piano. God is good, ain't He? Get as close. If you didn't get the point, let me say, make it again. Get his cloak. Jackie, I believe you're trying your best, sweetheart. I do. I, believe you. I know you've had some problems in time past. You've made some dumb mistakes and dumb choices. But I really believe you're trying your best. Sweetheart, get as close to the presence of God as you can. Get them children involved. It's a yes or no question. Do you, is that what I want or not? What about you young people? What about you young people? Yes or no? Do you want it more? Join me at the front. Join me at the front. If you really want the presence of God, join me at the front. Thank you, Lord. Come on around. Come on around, guys. Come on. Y'all can come. Welcome and come and pray with us if you like.
praise the Lord.
with one another to worship the Lord together. I tell you, there's strength in numbers when we come together. Even the Bible bears that out, that we're stronger together. You were never meant to fight the battles alone. And I'm so thankful for the Lord being with us always, but also seeing the Lord in each and every one of you. 
and the way you carry yourselves. We have a good church full of wonderful people, and I thank God for each of you every day. I just want you to know that. Praise the Lord. My brother can continue to pray. He'll pray all night if he wants, and we'll stay with him and we'll support him. But I want to go ahead, if you would, stand. And I'll say our dismissal prayer. Those of you that need to leave, you're welcome to. If you'd like to stay and pray, we'd love to have you do that. Let's go to the Lord together and let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you and we thank you. We thank you for the power of your spirit and for your presence and for your anointing. We thank you that we have the great privilege to come every opportunity and to hear the word preached, to worship you, to praise you, to meet together collectively so that we might be strengthened, that we might live for you every day, walk in your ways, be your hands and your feet, your voice, that we might run to those in need and flee from evil. God, we love you and we thank you so much. There are countless needs in this auditorium, Lord. Needs of healing, those that need a miracle of some kind. There are those that need a financial blessing. There are those that need deliverance from drugs, alcohol, tobacco, pornography, many habits. God, there are those that have family that are lost and they want them to come and be a part of the church here. And God, I pray that they'll come. I pray, Lord, there are so many that need some answer to some question. There's doubt. There's a roadblock. Lord, they need a revelation from you, God. Touch their heart. Open their understanding and give them peace. God, as we depart this place, we never depart your presence. Your eyes are always watching us, and we thank you. For there's no place we can go that you will not be available to us and that you're not watching over us. So God, as we leave, be with us and provide our safety until we meet again. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. God bless you. Prayer service 7 p.m. on Tuesday night. Midweek Bible study at 7 p.m. on Wednesday night. Tuesday night, Wednesday night. Please come and worship the Lord with us. God bless you. We love you. We hope to see you again soon.